Okay, we're going to go over the basics of using QGIS. And in this workshop, we're going to develop a map based on your favorite national park. And I'm going to go through this from basically from scratch so you can see how the how QGIS works. And so in the workshop, you're, you're going to want to create a map showing the boundary of your favorite national park. And we'll put it on top of a satellite um, image. Then you also will create a map that incorporates an official national parks map from one of those brochures you get when you enter national park and incorporate um, other GIS elements with it. And you're also going to create a map that shows your favorite hiking trail, trail or place within your park on top of a digital elevation model. So where to begin? So, you know, first off, you got to think about what your favorite national park is. So uh, mine is um, Sequoia National Park in California. Um, so the first thing you need to do is like get the boundary information for the national park. So I'm going to find that on the internet. So I'm going to go to Google search and one of the common f um, type file types for MGIS is a shape file and it's um, .shp. So what I'm going to search for is national parks, national park boundary, and type in shape file. Let's see what we find here. So we have a U.S. government database. And we have different um, options for downloading the file. And by the way, the KML file will also work. It's um, Google Earth's um, file file type. So we could download these. Let me see what else. Um, this is all the National Park Service's website. And it looks like, so here's general information. Um, facilities uh, but we're looking for boundaries so let's find click on the boundaries NPS boundary data looks like that's what we're looking for and scroll it down here these are the different attributes in the database associated with the boundary so we can just hit download and so there's that KML file which is Google Earth's format or shape file so let's download the shape file so that's downloading meanwhile you can open up your QGIS program And like um, using the Agisoft Metashape, you generally want to keep all your GIS um, files related to a project in the same folder. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so that first shape file is downloaded. So let me grab that. So I'm going to move it to my desktop. I'm going to create a new, a new folder. my first data into there and so when you open it up this is what it looks like so the shape file can take um, consists of several smaller files and so the dot shp is what you're looking for but the dbf is a spreadsheet and the dot, dot prg it's the projection it's in but all these uh, all this data is related to the shape file so we can go back to QGIS and hit new to start a new project and now to load that um, national parks boundary we go to layer add layer and add victor layer and then we hit this little three dots and that'll scroll and we can scroll to the folder where we have all our information at so i put mine on my desktop 
National Park map. Hit shape, the shape file. Open. Add. And so it will display all the um, boundaries for national parks in the United States. It's like it's got the Appalachian Trail on there. That's pretty neat. So it doesn't look like much right now with just the boundaries. So we need some more information. So one, some of the things you could have is like, you know, we could just have the state outlines of states. We could have the the background of the, the world over, or as part of this. So let's, so um, one thing you can use is a web service and, and QGIS are called XYZ tiles and they have different imagery and different um, or terrain, street views and that kind of stuff. Um, so to find that, the easiest thing to do is to Google um, QGIS XYZ tiles. And look at one of these websites. Normally they have the address for the different types that you need. I'm not seeing it on that one. Let's see. I'm not seeing it there, so I'm going to search for Bing specifically, which is Microsoft's Aerials. Okay. Okay, yeah, so this is the, the, the good one. Um, so this has example URLs of what you'll need. So here's Google Satellite, Google Bing Aerial. So to use this, you copy the URL here. And it can, you can look up all kinds of different services to use. So I'm copying that. Under here, you click on the XYZ tile. And you right click and you put new location. You put the name of it. You just paste the URL here. Hit OK. Then you have a live um, web, web service to use. So. If I want to use Bing Maps underneath the national parks, now that I have established this, I just drag it down and it plops it in there. And to show the national parks on top of the Bing Maps, I have to drag it on top. And so now I have the national park boundaries on top of a background satellite image. And so this is hooked to, so the Bing Maps is hooked to the internet, so it's live updating as I zoom in. And so within QGIS, so this, should, this is the symbology, so it's um, the national parks are symbolized by green uh, polygons. So we can change that to anything we want. So to do that, you right click on the layer uh, and go to open, or I'm getting ahead of myself. So go to open properties. You scroll down here to um, symbology. And you can represent this in um, many different ways. Um, normally, I select single sim symbol and simple fill so we can change the fill color to whatever we want so change it to red um, and also you can put um, no symbol or no fill so then it's just an outline you can change the stroke color stroke thickness color um, all kinds of things so and just to give you another example, so if I didn't do want to do a single symbol, you can do, um, you can make it two and a half D. Let's see what that looks like. 
kind of builds it, makes it look, um, projects the data a little bit. Forty-five degrees. See what it does. Doesn't look like it's really doing anything. So since we're zoomed out so far, okay. go back in here and uh, well anyway that's for how to symbolize a building um, you can play around with that if you want you're not going to really need that for this project um, and you can categorize it the data the polygon so you want to categorize it by region you go classify Not sure what the region values are for this. Maybe it's just the United States regions. Hit apply, and it'll color them into different colors based upon whatever data it falls into. So if we zoom out, it takes a little bit while. It's um, that's a status indicator bar indicating it's working so it's coloring the different national parks according to their looks like their region I guess Alaska is green up here We're not going to use this, but I just wanted to show you there's all kinds of different ways you can um, manipulate the data of how it's going to look. Um, another key thing, so property under properties, you can that's where you find the symbology of how to represent the data. Um, this I've given it too hard of a task to work on here. Okay, let's go back to single symbol. So, I'm not particularly interested in having all the national parks since I just want to illustrate one. So, let's go in here and a key thing you can do is you go to open attribute table. And here, here's the database that links all the different um, polygons together. So, this is a, a database you can manipulate and do and select the data and do all kinds of different things with. So, here's the unit name. So. I said my favorite national park was Sequoia, so let's scroll down here and see if we can find it. So here's Sequoia National Park. If I highlight it, it will highlight um, it on the map as well. You can also right click on it and zoom to feature. And it'll take you right to it. And then you can zoom out and see where you're at. And if you hit the little um, information icon, identify features, and if you're highlighted in here on the layers panel, you click on it, it'll pop up the attribute or the data based on the attribute table right here and I guess that's the uh, so Sequoia there's Sequoia and then there's Kings Canyon National Park they're um, adjacent to each other so I want to get rid of the green so let me go back here and go to fill So I gotta get rid of all that other stuff. Okay. So simple fill, we want fill, we don't want blue. And there we go. 
So we'll get we'll change simple fill fill style to no brush. And we'll change the boundary to one. Hit OK. So that's looking better. And to get rid of the highlight, the highlighted section, you can hit up here. There's a so this is a highlight, select features, you can deselect it right there. Another way to select your data is you can grab it right here, select features, and drag over, and that will also grab whatever you're working on. So that works pretty well. Um, so another thing to show our context is to show the Sequoia National Park within the state of California, so we might need a state file. So to find that, we'll go on the internet again. We'll start search for United States shapefile. Let's see what that brings up. So that might work. States basic. So download. folder and I'll copy it over to where I'm working in so to load that data up I'll go to layer add layer add Victor layer and go to the same spot the folder this time we'll go into the states folder Again, click, click the .shp folder, hit open, add, close. So now it's added the states, but if we don't want it filled in, let me just zoom to the states so we can see what that looks like. And to do a quick zoom um, to a particular set of features, the easiest way to do it is within the layers, you right click, then go to zoom to layer, they'll, they'll zoom us out to all the state information that we have and then to go back like this to the national parks click here zoom to layer I'm not sure what other national parks it's bringing up there and then to zoom back to the states zoom here and then and a key and a key thing to, to viewing your map is you manipulate the layers and so I put the national parks back on top of the states and you can see it a lot better okay so we probably don't want the yeah we don't want the states filled in so double click the states single symbol hit simple fill under fill style hit no brush hit apply and now we just have an outline I'm going to change that to one again Okay, so that's looking better like we are actually have something. I'll get rid of that. So, for our first one was to show the national park boundary. So, should create a map showing the boundary of your favorite national park on top, top of satellite imagery. So, using web service and finding those shape files. I now have the Sequoia on top of um, satellite imagery. But to make the boundary show up a little bit better, we can make it a different color, the boundary part. So I'll click on Simple Fill, um, Solid Line, so Struct Color. I can make it maybe white, make it show up better. So that will work. And then here's the zoom and zoom out tools. So one thing you can do is you hit there and then to isolate where you um, where you want to show up on your map, you just drag the zoom tool and it'll zoom you right where you want to be. So that would be a good view of the national park just on the satellite imagery. But say we didn't want this other national park over here to show up on our map. Let's see what that one is. Oh, Death Valley. So we don't want Death Valley to be on our map. 
So how do we get rid of that one and just only have the Sequoia one? So we can select this file separately and save it as a new shape file. So to do that, we, we need to select this file separately. So we can use this tool, or you can do it within the attribute database. So we'll do it this way first. So I've just selected the Sequoia and Keynes Canyon National Park. Now, if you right click on the shapefile within the layers, you go back to properties, or go back, go to um, export, and you can say save selected features as. And then we'll give it a file name. So we're going to um, hit these three dots and navigate to our folder that we're working in. We'll call this um, Sequoia National Park Boundary. Hit save. And then you want to make sure it says save only selected features. We'll use the default um, CRS coordinate um, reference system. And add save map file to map. Hit OK. So now that's a added a new shape file. So if we right click and open attribute table. These so it basically took out the data and now we only have these two files saved. And now we can remove this one since we're only working with this file. And so now we've gotten rid of all the other national parks. So if we zoom out, now we just have that one. So we can manip manipulate the data and um, share the data in, one, in many different ways. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let me deselect that. And now we got to change the color again. We don't want a purple. We'll just do a simple outline. No brush. And we'll make the make the stroke size one. We'll change it to a whiter color. Hit OK. Apply. So now here we go. We'll zoom in here. And then to export the map, you can also um, add the scale and north arrow easily on here. So the easiest way to do that is go to View, uh, Decorations. You can add Scale Bar. You hit Enable Scale Bar. You can say where it's going to be on your map. And you can style it however you want. So that black doesn't really show up very well there. So we'll change it to white. And then the font isn't showing up very well in black so we'll change that color to white apply so that's and you could change the size of the font to size of the scale bar Hit OK then we can add a north arrow Enable north arrow make this one white as well shows up down the corner. Maybe not white. The north looks kind of funny. The end. Let's try. Yeah. We'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Maybe a little bit bigger than that. Okay, so that's not too bad. Now to save our map, you go to Project, you go to Import Export, Export Map to Image, and then you can change the resolution. And hit Map Canvas Extent, which is just the extent of your screen that you're working on the map. Hit Save. And save it to our desktop. see what that looks like
okay so there's what it looks like so looks pretty good pretty high res um, yeah so that's a good first map so the next part was to create a map that incorporates an official national parks map with other GIS elements I will stop this um, video here and then create a new one for the second part.